<laughs> and then I, I love it. I love it how I tricked Joe into uh, doing something funny at the start of every live. We we are live. Oz Property Investors, your Wednesday, your favorite time of the week. We bring the big names and we bring the big big laughs here on Wednesday night. And uh, how, how you going, Joe? What, what's happening? Or how are you going, I'm, Karen? Sorry, to the guest yeah, first. That's, exactly, that's where I was yeah, going. Hi. Yeah, awesome. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Joe. Yeah, great. Thank you. How are you? Uh, I, want, I want to hear what Joe, I, I love his stripy outfit. What's, are you feeling zebra today? What's, what's the leopard? This is, what's uh, the leopard? it's, it's, uh, it's lockdown. I'm no fancy shirt for me, guys. Um, the, the buttons are coming off. So I am, I'm super pumped for today. We have the renovation queen, uh, Karen Baldwin. Um, and, and, uh, I don't, I don't think we're going to be upset about this one. I'm super pumped. This is one of my favorite ones. Sorry to everyone that was previous, but Karen is starting to take the top slot. So um, I've got, we've got some good questions lined up. And, Let's uh, see if he's still saying that in an hour, Joe. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't delete it as it's live. But no, we'll, we'll... that's right. Let's not take too early, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's that's fantastic. So what I was going to say, that's that's one thing. I, and, and the comments are floating through. I've got my life hack, so I'm not going to check that. But um, for your comments, for your questions, the more interaction, the more we see, the more Karen gets excited. We might even talk about Shiraz later on as well. Who knows? Oh, um, so the, get around uh, the, it. Get around the, it. The, the, thing, the thing I want to say is thoughts, thoughts go out to people that are in uh, lockdown, including Joe and myself. Thoughts go out to us. Um, and, and hopefully things uh, sort of settle down and all that sort of all that good thing. But I don't know, I just I don't worry about that sort of thing too much. And I know there's business out there that are really struggling, I'm sure. Um, but I don't want to draw on that too much. So let's go straight to the life hacks. Um, the guests first and, and Karen, I think you've got something absolute gold to share. What are, what are your life what is your life hack for us today? Well, this is something I, I live my life by. So I'm not just I didn't just pull this out of, you know, I didn't do a, a Google quick search this afternoon. So every Sunday night, take 30 or 40 minutes to set up your ideal week. So I, I have a, a spreadsheet and a template there and every day and I chunk. I'm looking at what my critical tasks are and I'm putting aside at least two hours of chunky time for each of those tasks. So I'm matching up my goals with my time. Do not disturb goes on the phone. The timer goes on in two two hour increments. And if you do that every week for about a month, you will smash your goals, no doubt about it. That's I'm uh, that. that. I like that idea. <laughs> I am very. It does take a bit of discipline. It does take a bit of structure and organisation. But if you can do all that, seriously, game changer. Yeah, I like that. Set up the ideal week. This is what you want it to look like, and then reflect. How did it? How did you end up? Is this what you That's wanted right. it to look like? No, I got yep. two things done rather than yep. seventeen that was on the list. That's right. What worked? Why didn't it work? How will I make that different next week? Is it about actually? Did stuff actually come up, or was actually what was going on between my ears? How long? How long have you been doing that for, Karen? Like you've been like you've been doing it for last couple of years. Yeah, okay. last yeah. couple of years, and then I refined it again. One of my favourite books is a great book called The One Thing. I, I called Gary Keller. And it's very much about how multitasking is a total crock and it's all yep. about you focus on the one thing in your business. So I, I, I've sort of been living it for a couple of years, but I really restructured my whole life over Christmas, New Year this year because I had it's, I set a pretty big goal, pretty big stretch goal. So in order yep. to do that, I knew I was going to have to get really, really focused. So, um, yeah, the last six months, it's, you know, I'm well, I'm well ahead of my goal schedule for the year because and I, and I put it down to that time chunking and that, that ideal week template. See, I love this. I love this idea. We have um, at my work, we have OKRs, which is um, objective and key result. And yeah. it's looking at the quarter and setting the overall goal that you want for the year and then breaking it down into quarters and then mm. setting the goals based upon, you know, the, that structure. So the top one of, you know, this little goal is helping me get to this by getting me to this, which is another step to this. And you keep ticking off and tracking along. And yeah. I was like, I need to set up these OKRs for my life because it's so yeah. it's so productive. It's it's just yeah. like it's so cool. what the you 90 actually... day sprints. Yeah, this whole and this whole um sprints, books around. Yeah. I've got one behind me in my bookshelf, the twelve the twelve week year. There's this whole concept that in yeah. a year, you know, oh I'll, you know, I'm gonna do three deals this year. But you know, in a year in the first few months doesn't matter and it gets lost in the wash. Whereas if you kind of set almost a year's worth of goals mm -hmm. and things into the 12 weeks. Wow. Um, not, with it, not stressing itself, but having good processes and procedures, it just really keeps you that that focused and, and kind of fast tracks your success, I guess. Yeah. That's it. Okay. That's it, Joe. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up some for Oz property. I'm going to hold you to this because let's uh, – Joe's going to hate me for this. He's going to really – he's not – he likes to be free. He likes to be free. Jeez, likes to be free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I've, been, I've been free for a long time and I'm starting to understand that there is um, – there is 
there's beauty in routine. There's beauty in yeah. an opportunity structure. in structure, and you structure can get your friend, it. All for yeah. it. Yeah, Discipl- impressive. Discipline Jack- equals freedom. Jacko Jacko Bullenick. I've butchered his name. Yeah, great. great book. That's not his name. Yeah. <laughs> what's his, <laughs> What's your life hack, Jeff? What have you got for us today? So I've got something better than last week. Last week was uh, was a bit of a hit and miss. Um, so my life hack this week, and I'm practicing it. I feel I'm in the zone. I'm, in, I'm Zen at the moment. And Karen's background is matching on that. I'm I'm turning off notifications from the uh, from the podcast from the live. Um, because otherwise you'll often see me flick between, and I'll still do it, don't get me wrong, I, I won't be perfect at it, but it's all about progress over perfection. So my life hack is rather than rather than sort of getting distracted by notifications on your phone, notifications when you're doing a, a live session, just turn it all off and focus, be, be as present as you can be. Um, so that's my life hack for this week. Get rid of the technology distractions and just be present, focus on the conversation as much as you can. Nice. Yeah, Love it. Short and simple. Joe, Love it. how about you? Yeah. Oh, mine. Mine is fantastic as well. Okay, you know when you, um, yeah, it's all right. It's not that great. Um, it's it's <laughs> actually it's super helpful. It's super helpful for people that use online stuff, and then you see like, get this report, get the six steps to how to save your life. You know, through through meditation. Enter your email, and we're going to spam you for the rest of your life. Um, so there's a thing called Temp Mail, and I use this all the time. You go to this website, tempmail.org. And it creates a email address for you. It creates a temporary oh. email address, and then you enter that email address in, and then it gets sent to you. So here you can see, like, you just grab it, copy it, and you just paste it, and then you put that wherever you want to. Now you're never going to see that email again. Like you're never actually going to um, be able to, um, uh, yeah. Like I can't even use my words, um, but you, you you can get the thing in the inbox down there, and then you get your seven step report, and then you download it. Um, so that is my life hack. I actually use that so much more than you would imagine. Um, so helpful in the tech space when you want to download a report or something like that. So I was going to run. You still, example. You've still got twenty thousand emails though, Joe. So you you must you mustn't be yeah. You must you might need to use a bit more to just subscribe to something or whatever it is. Look, we, you know, we're getting there. That's <laughs> one step at a time, mate. Right. Having twenty thousand emails, we're looking at you. <laughs> I can't organize my life and, you know, sort out emails as well. Like one thing at a time, baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> That's right. Cool. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, so what are we doing next, Jeff? We're doing. We're doing your uh, your sponsor. You should know this show. We we. we I we, do we know this. I do know this. I do know this, mate. I'm just waiting right for you. Week? Last week, Joe got the wrong sponsor at the right time. It was, it was I bloody fun. hope this is the right sponsor because this is the one that we have. Uh, so let's get rolling with it. Let's let's run. Let's run with Joe. Oh, let's get a, get Joe big. Come on, Joe. What you, I, I gave you. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. No, it's not. You don't. <laughs> if you don't talk about it, it's not awkward. Uh, okay. Just, no. <laughs> Joe, come um, on. I, I haven't got... You haven't got all day. I know, mate. I know. I know. Okay. But you guys are a little machine. Karen's disclosed about free deals in the last. <laughs> agent underquoting. Oh, here we go. Is aged by six months, boy. Every single day, he is negotiating with real estate agents to get the <laughs> best deals for his clients. To give you a bit of a background, Scott has been working in real estate since 1995, and as a real estate oh, yeah. agent, built up three Bell franchises. He was the guy teaching the agent all the tips and tricks to get the most out of the buyers. However, Scott realized that there was actually no one on the side of the person buying the property, and he saw them constantly letting emotion get in the way and paying way over for the property. And that's why he created Hello House, Australia's first property negotiation as a service business, where he is on the side of the buyer. In hot markets like we have now, you need absolutely every single edge that you can get. These agents are trained professionals and they are there to get the most money out of you, which is why you need to have an expert of your own in your own corner. The way it works, you find the property, then Scott will come in at the negotiation phase and take over for you. This is how you'll get the property for its true value. He'll ensure that you don't overpay. He comes in, knocks a real estate agent down on price, no more agent games, no more tricks, no more tactics. He is there for you. 
Scott has been kind enough to offer us an amazing discount on his service, and I've personally just seen a friend pay $20,000 more on a property because of these agent games. Reach out to him with the link below. It'll be the best property investment you will ever make. There you go, Joe. Hey, oh, there you go. I don't... Oh, I, I think we owe Scott a uh, another session, so... <laughs> <laughs> what was, what was going on with screen? Was, anyway, that's the we'll Were you just you. looking at me the whole time? Yeah, yeah, yeah because you didn't share oh, your screen. I could have been picking my nose or anything. I thought I was <laughs> going through the bloody screen. Only a little bit awkward. Yeah, no, oh, no, 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 I'm no, just no, like. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but there you go. So, so let, let's get to, let's get to the, the first of the hour, Karen. So I, I, I wrote a bit of a spiel for you, and correct me if any, like you've probably done another four or five renovations since I've written this. So you've, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of, I'm going to do a bit of reading. So you, you have a background in, in business and, and, and financial journalism in the newspaper, and then you moved into corporate public relations, media relations, and business listings. So I, I, I think I, I resonate with that because I've got a bit of a corporate background myself. Um, and, and then you sort of, I, I listened to the podcast you did with, with Toddy Sloan, Pizza King, and you're doing a couple of podcasts with him at the moment. And your fallback from a journal was being a real estate agent. So uh, you sort of had your own consultancy for 20, 20 plus years. I'm amazed. Hey, I, didn't, I, I don't know how you've been 20 plus years. That's, that's uh, I, I think you, you see, I would have, you, you probably started when you're about sort of 10 or, 10 or 15. You, you, Too you kind, started, Jeff. So, Keep, yeah. keep going, Jade. Very good. <laughs> so you, you said though you didn't love it anymore. You found it hard to do something you didn't enjoy. So you, you got into got into doing this um, in, in in your forties, and and you and you sort of you got into it with, with small reno, and you, you read a few books and did a few courses in your own words. I think you're, you're very humble. I think you've got a lot of uh, experience from your own sort of things. And and now here we are today. You've done sixty plus renos, um, plus a couple of sort of small developments. And, you, and you, I think the thing you said, you did seven in five weeks or how many, or you did five in... Oh, we, we did, at one time we did seven Renaults on the go, one time, a couple of years ago, which I don't recommend to anyone. Um, and then I'd like to do a bit of crazy crap from time to time. So last year I set myself a challenge um, to find five deals in five weeks. We're actually looking for land splits at that time, riding off the back of the home builder grant. Um, so we went, okay, let's do, let's see if we can get five in five weeks, primarily off market. Um, yep. And we actually ended up getting seven deals in five weeks, um, and that was off a pretty wow. intense letter campaign uh, yep. to target homeowners, and as well as some off-market agent relationships. So, um, yeah, that's the kind of crazy stuff we like to do, just to you know keep us on our toes. Did I did I miss anything that you feel that I should have added to your bio? No, no, no. I think you pretty well know. Thank you. You obviously yeah. listen well. So yeah, pretty well. I guess we started out as as you know, I don't really like the word flipping, but flippers, renovators. And I guess we've done what a lot of people. I call it the evolution of the renovator. I see it a lot where people do renovate for a few years or do a few deals, and then go, oh yeah, this is good. But oh look at what they look at what those guys are doing driving around in the Amarok with puffer jacket. Like oh wow, they're making more money, you know, and less work. And so I guess we have morphed over the last couple of years into things like um, land splits and then small developments as well. So we've got four small developments on the go at the moment where we're building 21 homes um, across the four, um, as well as a structural reno. Um, and like everyone in this market, looking for more and, and um, wishing that other people wouldn't keep rocking up and bumping the off at option. Yeah. Jo, I, can, I, can just, I can just see Joe's mind turning over. There's so many questions, so many things what, what he wants to pick in there. But Joe, so you, you, you go on, Joe. Okay. Well, no. My first question I always like to ask um, is, I want like I want to talk mindset first because I think you're mm -hmm. really big in mindset. You're really big in structuring, and you're really about goal setting. So I wanted to talk about that. First question I always like to ask is, what book are you currently reading? Okay, so I've, two, I've got two on the go at the moment, and I've got so I've got one in, in my car that's on Audible. So that's the Miracle Equation by Hal Elrod. So I'm a big Hal Elrod fan. He's also written a great book called The Miracle Morning which yep. is about having a personal success routine. So that's actually hauling your ass out of bed an hour earlier and um, meditating, exercising, working on your mindset, all those things. He has another great book called The Miracle Equation, which yep. is all about how to achieve your goals sort of through um, unwavering faith and extraordinary action. Um, and I guess that's probably um, my, my mantra in life is massive action. So that, that book, I always have that on the go. I read it, I listen to it probably once every few months. Um, yeah, and wow. I'm also reading Dave Asprey's Game Changers as well. So he's obviously, he's like the king of life hacks. 
Um, yeah. and so are, you a bullet, are you a bulletproof coffee fan? Or no, I'm not? not actually. No, I have done a bit of keto over the, over the journey, like a lot of people yeah. have, and a bit of intermittent yeah. fasting. Um, yeah. But no, someone recommended that. So he's just spent years and hundreds of hours researching, talking to you know the most amazing people, and sort of has a whole range of, of life hacks. So I've just started that one as well. But um, I love books. I've got a I'm in my office now. I've got a um, Tony Sloan calls it my mini library. Um, hmm. And I, that, um, that's what I missed about COVID was not flying because I have a fetish for airport um, bookshops. I really will oh, go in and I'll come yes. home, come home with six books. Um, it's just a, <laughs> it's a weakness. So uh, yeah, I do. I'm always always been a big reader. So yeah, I do, you, uh, I do. I do have a budget, um, but books are not included in that. You can spend unlimited amount of money on books. That's all. That's what you're allowed to do. So any no, kind of opportunity. Just- it should be a spending plan rather than a budget. But budget to me conjures like a like a sort of a scarcity. Whereas when I've got mm. a spending plan, it's all about abundance, my friend. Right. Anyway, okay. I'll, 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 That's a mindset work right there. Yeah, spend it, spend it, it all. Spend it all. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I like it. Okay. Cool. Well. Um. Um. Okay. Cool. Well. Let, let's jump into the property stuff because that's what we're all here for, and that's what we're all about. So, can you tell us you bought seven deals within seven? Five seven weeks, weeks five, five weeks, weeks. Yeah. and yeah. um that was in the height of covid right so yeah, how, what, what made what you set that, that goal? what made you set I, that goal and then yeah. how did it happen how did it come well, i guess it was a, a pivot so we were as as i guess the crap was going down sort of march april last year um we uh, an agent bought a deal to us that was a big big chunk of land we cut it up and as agents often do oh i've got developers all over it like I've never heard that yeah. before. Um, and sort of as lockdowns are starting and everyone's sort of getting pretty nervy that this thing's actually the real deal, then obviously suddenly all the other developers seem to go um, go hiding. Um, and Hubby Scott and I just knew it was a good deal. It was a good-sized piece of land um, in an established neighbourhood. Um, we knew we could we could have cut it up into six, but we went, no, established neighbourhood, create the bigger blocks. We know our demographics really well, and I talk a lot about knowing your demographics and renovating and, and developing a property. Um, and so as we were sort of dividing, like cutting those up into three, um, good old ScoMo announced that the Home Builders Grant. Um, and literally within the space of a week, we had builders coming to us saying, have you got any land? We've got people coming through the doors of display villages and we've got no land. So the three blocks just walked out the door and that was a, a cracker deal. It was, you know, one into three, we made like 200K on it. Um, in a couple of months, wow. we worked with a really and good council. They they get DAs through you know land splits through really quickly. So it was kind of you know I don't want to sound flippant, but it was money for jam. It was three or four months worth of work for you know a, 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 probably a handful of hours of work for two hundred k. So we kind of then had a bit of a light bulb moment and I went, well, okay, the grants up and running, the builders just can't get enough, <clears throat> and so you we started to see this groundswell of. Of demand, so we were like, okay, well, let's just put renovating to the side for a moment, and let's just go nuts and find as much land as we can. Let's just produce as much land as we can. So that's where we went. Okay, so we, we picked a council area that we know really well. Um, we knew, had a minimum allotment size, and we basically just used RP data. You know, did a mail merge, um, and so in the course of about four or five weeks, we sent out nine thousand five hundred ninety-five letters. Um, all <laughs> every envelope was handwritten. Um, with a dollar ten stamp, so it was ten and a half grand worth of stamps. Um, and so, yeah. yeah, that was just we just went nuts on that for, for four or five weeks. Um, pretty good, pretty and, good on investment, I'd say. Oh, uh, well, it was awesome because the phone just started ringing and ringing, and um, so we got huge opportunity off it. So, um, b- between the five, la- we ended up picking up four land splits, a small development, a structural reno, and a cosmetic reno. Yep. And the end value out of all those, the profits from all those, ended up cracking the, the million dollar mark. Jeez, that's bloody hell! And so yeah. I have people say to me, "Oh, I don't want to spend money on stamps. Stamps are really expensive." <laughs> and I'm like, "Really, really?" Yeah. And and this is again, this is the mindset, I guess, that um, where I've always very much it's a business cost. You know, like books, books are a cost of business. Um, yeah. Stamps are a cost of doing business, you know. Um, so it's so so your toner, or you know, and so again, it's very much. Um, I know we're sort of ripping the pay before Jeff, but it is the difference between that that mindset of abundance versus scarcity. Yeah. So people say to me, "Oh, why do you only do deals in Adelaide? Why don't you go live?" I'm like, "Well, there's plenty of crap houses in Adelaide for me to work on, dude. You know, like I don't need to go and look for crap houses elsewhere. I just look at it and just go that there's 
you know, I live, live even in a small city, but I just go, there's tens and tens of thousands of opportunities out there, so why would I need to go anywhere else? Yeah. How did you get them drawn up? How did people write them? Did you have people writing so them I, I, print, I printed the letter, so I did a mail merge. So I have an assistant as well. Okay. So I had, we had a mail merge, printed the letter, signed the letter, and then we hand wrote the envelope. So rather than doing labels, um, there is certainly an element of, not many people get it. When was the last time you guys would have got a handwritten envelope in the mail with a stamp on it? Like it doesn't really happen anymore. So yeah, it kind of piques people's interest. It's like, oh, what is this? Is it an invitation or is it, you know, why, why would I be getting this? So some people would even ring up and be polite and just say, oh, um, we're not selling but I just really liked your letter and you've got really nice handwriting and, you know, we're like, yeah, cool, no worries. At least no one told us to, you know, go yeah, okay. take a long, long run off a short jetty. We've had a few phone <laughs> Um, but yeah, and in between that and the agents, and again, this is very much about just having your radar up. And um, I'm certainly no woo woo hippie, but very much I uh, am very much about intention and, and focus and um, you know what you're putting out. So, within you know, we, we made this commitment on a Saturday night we would do this, and on a Monday, an agent bought us a deal that we bought that night. You know, so that, that stuff's not coincidental. Um, you know, it is a real energy thing and it is a momentum. And that's where I think a lot of people often go wrong with their property stuff is the momentum's to stop start. That they get rolling and they get a and they maybe get a deal and they get immersed in the deal and that becomes all consuming and they live and breathe that for X number of months. But then they forget to do all those good things that they were doing before they got them that first deal. They come back out of the deal and then they're back at ground zero. They've lost that momentum and that energy. And I've just seen it so many times myself and, and with people that I've worked with and colleagues. If you start to get on a roll, it, it suddenly starts. And I found that we've had a bit of a dry patch the last couple of months because we're like everyone, we're competing. But, you know, we got one at auction um, a week and a half ago and then like last week four agents bought us something and then someone else bought us a friend of a friend. And so, you know, from that auction we've already got two more but it had been months since that that last one, you know. But then within the space of ten days, we got three over the line. So it's yeah. a real energetic thing without sending a woo woo. Yeah, I can see Joe frowning. Balance with the woo woo. You really got to like balance out your woo woo. You do. Yeah, and that's, that's and I do. I think because you know. On the other hand, I I'm a ball buster and a hard ass. So I guess it's. I think I, I think it, the, re, the results speak for themselves, though, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I guess. So. Well, it works for me, and it's and that's very much you know none of this none of this property stuff, none of this business stuff, none of this life stuff is one size fits all. I do what I do, and that works really well for me and my temperament and the resources I have access to. Totally not everyone's cup of tea. I get that. Um, so it's you know you know that cheesy old saying, you do you, you know, you, you find your own lane. You do, you do, you indeed. Um, what, what, what I was going to say though, just before we kind of, I, I love the mindset stuff. Um, I, I, I listen, I consume probably about eight, somewhere between eight to ten hours of podcasts a day. Uh, maybe, maybe not necessarily, and it's because I listen to it on two x speed, so it's maybe four hours. But because wow. I'm double, double time. Can we sort some help for that, Jeff? <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting in the home office at home and I'm like, well, what am I, I'm, I'm going to listen to, I can listen to bloody, I don't know, I listen to, um, I can listen to Machine Gun Kelly or I can listen to, I don't know, um, what's that, what's that, uh, Post Malone or I can listen to some of these kind of guys. And I, I love some of these, don't be wrong, I, I'm, I'm that kind of guy as well, but, you know, or I can listen to, you know, stuff that's sort of uh, moving me forward in my journey. Um, so I think, and, and listening to some of that stuff, you sort of, a lot of the people that are super successful, and maybe it's just coincidence, but, mm -hmm. They talk about that sort of stuff, and then there's people out there in, in, in across the Facebook world, and they they're sort of they're saying, "Oh, look, how do I sort of do this? And how do I do that?" And they're focused so much on the tactical, and they're not sort of thinking about what's stopping them. They're actually just. But anyway, that's that's kind of my two cents on that. I'll, I'll, I'll get my first question out there. The thing I want to take take us back to, I believe you started. I don't know how long ago you started. That's one thing I didn't research or didn't listen to in your podcast. Um, maybe five, six, seven years ago, was it? A bit longer? Seven, seven eight. Yeah, well, the first one really was probably the serious one, probably, yeah, seven and a half odd years ago. Yeah. What was, what, do you remember that deal? What, what yeah, was it like? How did it, how did it go? Jeff, you always remember your first. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I love Is that what I, I remember my, Yeah, I remember my first <laughs> good, good times. Sorry, <laughs> that was a bit risque. Um, it yeah, was, I totally it was up remember. in Newcastle. It was a little um, two-bedroom unit um, in a suburb uh, that we know really well, uh, an adjoining suburb to where we live. Yep. Been looking for a while, bought it on market, made a, an offer, made a lowish offer. Um, and so then I nearly cacked myself when the offer got accepted because I'm like, crap, I'm actually going to have to do a, a reno. I'm going to have to do a flip. 
Um, so it was just a little tea better, but it went pretty smoothly. You know, we had it done and dusted in about four odd weeks, sold it, I don't know, I think it made about 20 odd grand. So, I, you know, I was happy with that because we hadn't lost money. It was very much an experiment. I'd yeah. always loved the idea of doing it. Um, but, you know, let's see, are we cut out for it? Are we any good of it? Good at it? Do we know what the hell we're doing? Um, and I guess just really got a taste from there. I just went, you know, like, as with all those first projects, lots of learnings, lots of, okay, we won't do that again. We'll do more of this and less of that. Um, and so they went, yeah, okay, this is really where, and, and we talked about, we mentioned I was I was 40 at that stage, um, being a journo and a PR consultant since I was 18, kind of done everything I wanted to do, had a great career, met lots of great people, got to co-author a book, did all that, but it just wasn't um, lighting my fire. And so I was finding I was juggling my PR business with property and when I wasn't working on property, I was getting grumpy. And I guess all the property tragics on here will get that. You know, it's the thing that you love doing and um, having to work on the day job, but that's what's paying the bills. So I kind of really set an intention that I would transition out of PR um, and transition into property full time. And so I really worked on that as a goal and put a plan in place to do that. And yeah. so we were able to do that sort of within about 18, 20 months. Um, we sort of did about half a dozen deals by then and to the point then as we were doing that, as we're winding up property, I'm winding down PR and then yep. to the stage I could sort of, you know, let go of all my contracts, et cetera, and, and yeah, about five and a half years ago went full-time uh, in property. It's so crazy, isn't it? Like um, what I really like with your journey is you didn't just say, yeah, I, I'm going to go off and like there's something I would do. I'd be like, okay, I'm done, see ya. Uh, <laughs> But you were yeah. like, okay, cool. This is the thing that I want to do. I'm making money. I'm having a great time. This is not supporting me as much as I want, you know, spiritually, mm. intellectually or whatever it is. Um, oh, how yeah. do I get from here? I'm here and I need to get to here. How do I build the bridge between the two? Um, but you actually planned it out and had it structured and you had key milestones. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I guess that's the benefit of a business background, Joe, is, you know, I was, mm. um, I came from a small business family and then even when I was, in corporate roles, I was like the GM of the firm, so I was responsible for managing, bud managing budgets and um, timeframes and project schedules and things like that. So I'm, I'm really yeah. grateful that I had that grounding. Um, yeah. And so that's why for me it was a very logical next step to then go, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, and I, it, business was all, um, property was always going to be a business. It was that once I knew that it was a good fit and it, money could be made, it was never going to be. A hobby and I get it is a hobby for some people but I don't I don't like the idea of dabbling in property or whatever I think it deserves more than respect than that but um yeah. so yeah it was just having a plan and, and sort of we pretty well got there on on target um and then just kept cranking it from there really and, and obviously that's the great thing is the hardest part is when you're trying to do part-time or full-time work and part-time property that's probably when you yeah. actually work your hardest and pedal the hard your hardest so I know for me you know we were I would I would get up at four in the morning and I would do two or three hours of property activity before before then the family was up and I had to be working on my PR business. And I'm not great in the evenings. Come nighttime, I'm having a glass of red wine and watching MasterChef or whatever. So I work best in the mornings. So I would get up at four and do that two or three hours. Um, so that's when you're peddling really hard. It's it's the luxury then when you can go full time, you sort of go, oh, you know, you get, you get to sleep until seven. Um, before you have to think, before you start thinking about properties. So that's the hardest time. And that's, I guess, when people who do maybe have a goal of going into property full time, that's where it really sort of sorts out the men from the boys pretty quickly. Are you prepared to do what it takes to get there or is it all a bit too hard? This is really just something you're interested in rather than something you're totally obsessed with. Yeah, the yeah. way I like to think about those type of things, like, um, is um, when something is incredibly challenging like that, it's like, okay, cool. At this point, someone would have dropped off and it's getting even harder. Yeah. Someone would have dropped off. And it's like, well, if I keep going, I'm going to be the person that actually makes this thing. Mm. Um, and that the, there's so many points where other people would have dropped off, um, which means there's less competition. Um, it's the, the Stephen Bradbury School of Property and Business, Joe. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, last man standing is Stephen Bradbury. Like They all fell around and we all thought he was gone and he uh, dropped up. And I've seen that even now with... With deals and things, even in a hot market that's been super frustrating and I've never worked so hard in between deals, you know, I've never gone to so many auctions and been smashed and made so many offers and, and things like that and not, not had any traction. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, the one that we got the other day was the fifth auction of the day, you know, we'd been smashed at the other four, it was cold, it was piddling with rain, which helped just because the dodgy Renault extension had then had just water streaming in one of the rooms, so that was awesome. Um, oh wow! 
as everyone else is running out screaming. So the property guards looked after us. But we got it on that day. And that was probably, you know, dozens of options. And that's just, I think, often the difference between those who succeed and don't. It is a Stephen Bradbury. It's just you're the one that rocked up one time more than everybody else did. <laughs> Stephen yeah. Bradbury. i got a great Stephen Bradbury call. Uh, uh, he's a great guy. He's an awesome speaker. If you ever get to hear him speak, he's phenomenal. Well, I um I I met, we had a we he was at a conference promoting one of the his new products oh. that he had and he was having a couple of drinks so he was pretty pissed and then they're like they <laughs> call him telling the story. I'm telling the story now and okay. then they call him up on stage and he's oh. like mate I'm I'm wrecked right now like I I'm not gonna be yeah but you're my good friend and you're gonna do motiv you do motivational speaking so come on up and he's like oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it oh, was the no. best, oh, it's the best cool. it was the best speech <laughs> ever. He, uh, legal team, uh, give us a call after <laughs> this if you want to issue. But he's a what, super super funny guy though, isn't he? But he talked he's, about he's you know, that, that he's overnight a great success. Guy. He talked about how he worked his his tail off for years after years after years, you know, and, and then he had something on his ceiling, like he had a mantra or something on his ceiling or he's had stuff, mm -hmm. you know, he was super focused. I got um, the drunk story, so I, I didn't, he didn't tell me any of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I'm interested in is um, you're going one property at a time, right? Like that's that's what people do. That's what normal people do, right? They get a project and then they, they do the thing and they focus all on that and then they, they lose momentum and then they have to restart again. So how do you um, – what, what kind of shifts are there um, in any sense of the word? Uh, are there from going from running one project at a time to running multiple projects at a time? Because that's massive. Well, I feel like that would be a massive thing. But yeah, yeah what are the – Things in that. So I guess a lot of it, I mean, the driver and it was, you know, the, the, sort of the difference for us is having access to the money because, you know, let's be honest, we don't work with $20 widgets, um, mm -hmm. you know, at any given time we've got, you know, hundreds of millions at stake. So I know at the moment we've got about $10 million worth of projects on the go. So, you know, sometimes at three in the morning I do go, holy shit, what were we thinking? Um, but if someone said to me once, they're just zeros, Kaz, don't worry about it, it's just another zero. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so for us, it was certainly very much access to um, money partners. Um, so, you know, we could fund, we had the, the borrowing capacity to be able to do, you know, one small project at a time. Um, but so for us, it was when we could then work with a money, one money partner originally um, to then he's like, oh, well, you use your borrowing, you do, your pro you do that project and then I'll fund this one over here. You find it and you do the work, but I'll fund it all and then we'll go house in a profit. So then it was like, oh, okay, this is cool. So we're getting 100% from this one over here that we're funded and then we're getting 50%. And so that just kept building and, um, you know, he's he's been a great um, great part of our business. We're still great mates seven-odd years later. Um, I think we've done about 13, 14 deals together um, and we've just finished up doing six townhouse build together with him. And it's still a really mutually beneficial relationship. So he's a very um, cash-rich person but very time poor. He has a very successful business. So that was, I think, a real light bulb moment to go, okay, well, wow, it's it's getting that momentum. And then you can start to do things when you've got a couple on the go, then you can start to buy in bulk and then you start to get discounts on things. And so then we would do things like get a storage unit and we would go and start buying the tiles that we were using by the pallet um, or the floorboards or whatever we were using or if we were at, at Bunno's and, you know, we saw that it was 10 taps out half price, we would just buy all 10 because we're going to use them in the next few months anyway. So it, it's like everything, again, I feel like I'm pretty, but it snowballs and it builds on itself. So then you can yeah. do, then you get more money partners. So then, so what happened there is Brett, our money partner, his bookkeeper's like, what's this Rainmaker property? Like, what, what's this money you're making here? Like, Make it rain. Yeah, making it rain, baby. What, that's what you're doing. So then next thing. I didn't the money in. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, next Very thing the bookkeeper's in. Next thing the bookkeeper's like, well, I've got a line of credit with this amount there, so how about that? So then she started using the line of credit and then she started using a self-managed super fund. So all of a sudden you've got these, so it's been that way since is we, more often than not we have more money partners than we have deals. I've got people saying to me, well, where's the next deal has one roll over into the next one? So I think for me that's if you can build that relationship and again you know we're in property but i know it sounds cheesy but really we're in the people business because everything we do comes back to our relationship so for us um i guess you know you can gather i don't mind don't mind having a yarn don't mind having a drink i'm pretty enthusiastic and so i think people like that like they want to be part of something that's energetic and very fulfilling and it's like they get to become i think it's almost like they're living you know living their dream life of channel 94 that they're part of a Renault. 
but they're not having to go and do the, the grind of the reno every day. They can pop in and have a look and I send them photos and then happy days. Show them mates. Yeah, that's right. And they do. And that's exactly oh, right. Yeah, and yeah. that's how we get more money partners. The friend, the brother-in-law then rings up and says, oh, I was chatting to so-and-so the other day and, you know, we've got 300. Could you do anything with that? Uh, let me think about that for, you know, 0.3 split seconds. So, yes. um, so that's really what, sorry, that's a really long answer to a short question, Joe, but it, that was certainly, and so with that, the mindset of um, how big can we build this and, you know, and what do we need to do and then, you know, getting better with systems and processes and better with buying. So I look at that first reno we did, I look at now and go, we probably, if I did that now, I probably could have made about another 15K profit. Because back in the early days, it was paying too much, paying retail. My mantra now is never pay retail. Um, you know, we don't pay retail for our houses and we don't pay retail for our staff. We pay our trades really well. We look after our trades. We never skimp on that. But our yep. savings are coming from shopping it really well. So I look back, you know, on those early days and go, we could have made a lot more money. But that's cool. That was the experience that we had to go through. Um, and then we just got that traction and that momentum and got the volume and it just kind of built on itself from there. But, very, again, very disciplined, very structured. Um, I'm, I'm pretty red hot on money management. Um, you know, I've got bank accounts everywhere and, you know, every project has its own bank account and have bank accounts that the tax goes into And because you can suddenly get into a bit of trouble and I've seen it happen. You've got all this money washing through and all these projects and stuff going everywhere and people have got their Bunnings receipts mixed in with their Woolies food shop receipts and which one's which. And So really good right. processes and structures around finances and, and project scheduling and stuff too. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was going to say. What are some of the good tips that you have, like setting up a new bank account for every single project? That's a great, that's a great idea. Yeah, All the money goes through that. You get yeah, a new card. Yeah. So at any given time, I've got a wallet and I'll pull it out and I feel like I'm Gina Reinhart or something because I've got, you know, like eight credit, eight debit cards there. But it is all very kept, you know, and it's labelled with that project. So I know I'd use that for that. I'm fortunate we also have an awesome, we have an assistant, Linya, who's worked with Scott and I on and off. Um, and she's really good at all the stuff I'm crap at. So like detail and doing stuff with the accountant and running a zero file for every, you know, she runs the P&Ls for every project. So every Monday I've got an update on every project. I can see what we spent, what it owes us. So having all those really good pros. And I'm, I'm a really big one on delegating. So I, from early on, I'm like, that's not my bag. I want to be over here finding stuff. Can you take care of that shit for me? Sorry, it's just one thing you just said there. I'm not detail orientated. What? <laughs> You're running all these projects. How are you? <laughs> yeah, well, I get bored by detail of, oh, so this, this $34.84 Bunnings receipt, what project was that for? Oh, far out. I don't know. Like, I don't care. Ugh. Don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't care. care. I don't know. You know, <laughs> so that kind of thing. So I'm a bit like, I feel like I'm a bit like a tsunami that kind of comes in. And then I have Linya comes in, come in behind me and kind of Except locks the pieces. up. Yeah, and it does have me Scott. So my husband Scott is a real estate agent, um, but still a nice guy, so we won't hold that against him. But he's increasingly now working more and more in the business as well because he's a great project manager, um, particularly with the development side um, as well as the Renault. So my role is kind of I fund them, I fee them, I, I find, I fee or I fund. <laughs> and then I get them, I secure them, and then Scott kind of runs the project. Then I'm still involved, but that's kind of his dream. Yeah. Um, and then we've got sort of Linia helping to make run all the systems, and, you know, everything now through to having like a CRM to manage our real estate agent relationships, our pipeline of leads, our money partners, things like that. So um, let, me, let, me, let me kind of inject there because <laughs> I, I, if, I'm, if, I'm a, if I'm a beginner investor, I'm a newbie. I, I want to sort of, I, I want to, I want to kind of give them a. I want to tell them the things that I can take because I'm thinking, okay, great, ten million dollars on, on at the moment. I'm running like seven projects at any one time. What? How do? How do? How does somebody think about that? And what? And what? What I'm? What I would want to impart to them is, it doesn't matter whether you're doing one deal, your first buy and hold property, or whether you're doing your fiftieth development. These are the kind of things that you really need to think about. You have to take it seriously. You have to have a process. You have to sort of. You have. There's going to be obstacles along the way, so you have to understand that thing and you have to learn how to delegate get the property manager on it rather than you going out there at 3 a.m on a sunday night to go and fix the toilet or go and fix the broken window because yeah. otherwise if you're if you're you have to let go of some of that control and actually take some of the action and and have some actionable goals and and and, ta and things Spot on, Jeff. And it's playing to your strengths like it's knowing being really honest with yourself and having some level of self-awareness around okay well i'm really good at this this and this Yep. And I'm really crap at or I don't really enjoy this, this, and this. So how do I delegate that or how do I get better at those things? Is there a course I can yep. do? Can I read a book? 
can I get someone involved? So it's playing to your strengths. And so, you know, like it's also making sure you've got the threshold and the risk tolerance for, for doing this as well. So for a lot of people, and like, uh, you know, if doing one at a time is awesome, I would never pick people up because it's like, you know, you're doing something, you're in the game. Like, you know, a lot of people talk about it. I don't, how many people do we all know? Oh, yeah. I'm a renovator, I'm an investor. You know, Happy sees it as a, um, a real estate agent. You know, they'll roll their eyes and go, oh, here come the tire kickers. You know, if, you, if you're doing one and you only ever do one, unless you got in the game and you had a go, even if, you, if you're doing one a year. And that's, you know, I know a lot of people that do, use this strategy, they do one a year and that helps, you know, pay the school fees and, you know, back in the day, pay for a trip to Bali and it helps pay the mortgage down. So, you know, again, you, you do it what works for you, but know, have the self-awareness, be honest with yourself about are you actually cut out for this? So I get not everyone's cut out for $10 million at a time, but I've seen some people have a conniption about buying a $300,000 house and doing a $50,000 reno as well. So, you know, don't go burn your bridges and go, yeah, I'm a full-time renovator. Actually be doing a few projects and make sure you cut out for it and that, you know, yeah. this is what you want to do. I have this running joke that renovating is not cruising around Bunnings in a puffer jacket, you know, drinking coffee and checking out hot tradies. I mean, that's that's the good part. Um, says that's the a bonus. Yeah. Um, but that's but that's the pointy end, you know. That's that's not seeing the the ninety eight percent of grind and desktop research and you know fifty opens and thirty eight fizos and twenty five offers that got refused. You, you have to make sure you actually love all that that side of it because a lot of it's not sexy. No. Mm. One one thing I wanted to just cycle back to a little bit was just around the delegation space because mm -hmm. you say like bookkeeper and de delegating to other people um is the person that you do the bookkeeping like in australia and like a local like in yeah. your like you, you yeah. deal with them i've not tried like an VAs. Outsourced overseas yeah. done the va stuff and for me it didn't work for me and that's just made it because i'm a pain in the ass and i'm a bit of a control freak too um yeah. so linia who works with us she lives 10 minutes away um she comes into the office some days with me um, she's right there, so um, I pay a premium to have her, but her skill set is extraordinary. She's so organised. She actually knows what I'm thinking before I do. So, yeah, but VA certainly for a lot of people, a VA can be a great way to, to take away some of that, that back-end stuff. Um, just obviously find find the right ones. And there's lots of, lots of great agencies and things around now that can help mm -hmm. you find good people. So whatever it takes, just do it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, so let's let's kind of if if you I'm not going to completely dive into the weeds, but I, I want I want to get some uh, sort of reno stuff because um I, I think there's so much gold in, in in your knowledge and expertise. You don't do sort of sixty plus renos about sort of making a mistake or learning what 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 works and what doesn't work. So what 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 are some of the the top tips you have for doing? And just give us free because I'm sure you could you could talk for two hours about this, write a book about it. What are the top three tips of when you're doing any reno? Like uh, it can be as high level as you want or as yeah. granular as you want. So make, make sure you know your market, know your demographics. Mm. And I bang on about this a lot. Um, yeah. So it's really knowing, okay, so in that in that market, what is it? So I talked before even with the development. I, it, I know we're renovating, but it's a similar concept. We could have bought okay. that chunk of land and we were allowed to cut it into six. But just because yeah, you yeah. can do something doesn't mean it's the best it's outcome. So while we could have cut it into six, <laughs> we recognise it'd be far more desirable to cut it into three because that's what that market would want. And so it's the same with your renovating. It's knowing your market. So, you know, I'll obviously renovate a, a four-bedroom home um, for an established family market, very different to a two-bedroom unit in a, in a beachside suburb. So oh, I, I'll think about, well, you know, in the, in the unit, the bathroom's pretty cramped and stuff. Actually, do we need to have a bath? Do we take that out and make a much more luxe, bigger shower? So who's going to be the buyer? Are they going to be bothered about not having a bath or not? You go, well, no, it's probably a downsizer or a single single young female. Um, so you can get away with that. So I think mm. it's really important. People go, oh, I'm going to, going to you know, um, turbocharge it and so I'm going to turn a 3-1 into a 4-2. But they do that, but then they eat into all the living space. And you go, yeah. okay, well, that's right, you've created four bedrooms, but you've got bugger all living space now for five or six people to live in. Like, how's you've got this pokey one living area? So how is that going to work for a larger family? So and it's really... You just cut out you just cut out 70 to 80% of your market and, and then it's kind of like building, I mean, I don't, I know you don't do granny flats, but it's kind of like building a granny flat. Like there's not many, there's not many people, not many owner occupiers that are going to buy a granny flat because it just doesn't yeah. really, they don't need that space. So they don't, yeah. That's right. Yeah, so I really talk to people a lot about immersing yourselves in your suburbs, immerse yourself. So that means go to the opens, 
eyeball eyeball the buyers, like listen to them. I'm, I'm going to sound a bit creepy and stalkerish, but I like hanging out at opens to hear what people are saying. So, oh, it doesn't have enough storage, or that kitchen's pokey, or that's a crap bathroom, or so, mm -hmm. oh, okay, right. And that's the benefit too of having had Scott as our agent. He sells most of them. He can, he'll know at the other end. He, he's heard the objections that many times. Oh, it's not enough storage, not enough car parking with it. So, so really, I would talk about that. Um, I would talk about the fact that um, renovating is problem solving. So, looking at looking at a potential project, can you solve all the problems that's going on with that property? So, if it's because it's you know you've got an orange and brown seventies kitchen and a pink terrazzo bathroom and the and you know the, the living's pokey and things like that. Can I change that? Can I renovate that away? Yes, I can. So that's that's great. But all right, if it backs onto a train line, it's on a main road, it's got overhead yeah. wires, I can't oh, renovate yeah. that away. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So be, be really clear on what the problems are, with what the buyer objections are and whether you can solve them. If you can't solve them all, then you have to go, well, those that remain, are they a deal breaker? Yeah, and then also just making sure that it comes back to the market, but um, we're not, you know, don't try and uh, overlay your own values and your design style and, and things like that on your whole property journey, not just even the renovating mm -hmm. and the style. But, you know, like I've heard people say, well, why would anyone sell off market? Because any muggins knows at the moment they could stick their property on the market and, and make a, a heap of money. Like I don't understand why anyone would sell off market. And it's because there are still instances you know, that's us overlaying our values as a, as a property person and as investor. But there are people who hate the idea of going to the open market. They don't like agents. Um, yep. I've seen situations where it's a deceased estate and the family's mortified and totally embarrassed about the state of the house that, that's in because yep. there's that much nicotine on the walls. You know, that even I went to one the other day and even the, the toilet system was, was brown from nicotine because the old boy was sitting there smoking durries while he was, you know, doing his uh. business. Um, so the things like that. So don't overlay your own values just because you wouldn't sell off market. Don't assume no one would sell to you off market. Um, just because you like a certain mm. color or a certain style in a home, don't assume everybody does. So be mm. open to again reading the cues uh, of people around you and, and having that emotional intelligence, mm. I think, and and the market intelligence to to be understanding what's happening around you. I love that. I love that. There's um. Our, our second favourite real estate agent outside of, um, obviously, your husband, uh, Toddy Sloan. Well, no, no, the no, last, no, last no, episode no. with him, he said... My husband and, and Todd are actually late, so that's all cool. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> two, two lovely guys, two great guys. Yeah. Um, he said pretty isn't profit. Um, yes, but yeah. That's uh, definitely you can easily overcapitalize on, yeah. a, on a renovation. But one of the things that we were take, talking about, I think it was before we went online, was... Um, there's a kind of 10% rule for renovation, right? You you buy a $300,000 property, that means you need to spend $30,000 on it to, to mm. get the value. What are your views on that? I put it up there as one of the great myths of, of property and certainly of, of renovating. So um, I think it, it's got its place. I think that's very much more of a model if you're buying and holding. I, I can right. see the merit in that, that you would yeah. for, for um, the money that you're spending and if you're putting tenants in there and that's the plan, then that would make, make sense. But in terms of flipping, um, we don't we don't generally hold any of our renos. We, we hold some of our development stock rather than our renos. So our renos are very much, they're our, they're our cash flow, our shorter term cash flow. Development's a chunkier payday because at the end of the day, um, I've still got school fees and braces and groceries and Shiraz to pay for. So we kind of need the shorter term projects for the cash flow, knowing that's coming. So um, I never looked at it that way. I work much more off a model as a flipper. It's much more about what's my return on my overall spend. So if I've bought for 300, you know, I've got stamps of 15, I've spent 50 on the reno, yep. whatever, you know, all my costs are at, you know, we're at 380, but I'm, I'm selling it for 430 then I'm really cool with that. So for me, it's not about what, what you bought it for. And so what happens if you buy really well, if you use that model, you buy really well, but you're almost punishing yourself because you've reduced your reno budget because you've bought ah, something. Very good point. Whereas my model is about you buy, you know, as with all renovators, you know, it's all in the buying. So so I think yeah. it's, I'm, I'm not the one for canning other people's um, formulas or whatever, each to their own, but for what we do uh, as, as turning it back on. And, you know, buyers just are so discerning these days. They don't, um, you know, they don't, they'll, they'll see that it's tile paint. 
um, they'll see that you've, you know, resurfaced the bench tops. And, and most buyers these days have got champagne taste, still on a beer budget, um, but they have the champagne taste. So for us, yeah. it just makes sense. They love the idea of going into something that's, you know, almost like a new build. You know, it's, it's an oven that no one's ever cooked in. It's a shower that no one's ever had a shower in. Um, they, they kind of like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, again, it's just knowing your market and knowing what you can do. So I've got plenty of friends that use tile paint and things like that when they renovate. But it's it's a buy and hold in a regional town in New South Wales, um, so that works. So it's just again, it's I guess not getting too yeah, caught right. up in anyone's given anyone else's formula or structure. It's it's knowing mm. your market, what you want to do, what your buyer is going to be, what you're capable of doing yourself. I think. Yeah, and one of the things that you were talking about before, um, I keep going back to the before, but it was uh, you don't pay whatever's listed. Whatever's listed is relate. Uh, re Irrelevant to you. Irrelevant. Irrelevant, Irrelevant right. to you. Yeah. And you pay your price. How do you, yeah. can you talk to that a little bit more? Yeah, sure. A lot of people, and this is all about feasibility. So this is, again, doing all that legwork where you know your market really well. You know your resale. So I know that in that market that, that you know, if I take a 3-1 and it's crappy and it's got nicotine walls and all that and, and you know, wallpaper from here to Wazoo, but I do this and this to it, I know I'm going to get that at the other end. That's That's been years of, of you know, well, not years, but even months of, of knowing those markets. So I never, ever have made an offer on a project without having done a proper FISO first. Um, I mean, I can even do them and, like, I can sit in the car and go, yep, 315, but I still will always go home and plug the numbers in and save that FISO. Um, yep. And so people, a lot of people struggle with this. I hear people say, oh, well, I've done a fees okay, but um, the numbers don't stack up. And I'm like, what do you mean the numbers don't stack up? What, is, what's the, what sort of a broad sweeping statement is that? Well, well you know, I punched in the numbers and they're, they're asking for 400 um, and at 400, you know, I'm going to make a 20K loss. And <laughs> well, I'm like, well, yeah. Offer them, offer them 350. Well, that's right. It's like, yeah, no, it's a lot. So it's like I keep saying to people, your fees should be an evolutionary document. Mm -hmm. So I always say start off with their ask price first as a, as a starting point and more often than not you'll fall on the floor laughing because it would be like so far off. Um, but then just keep tweaking it and just keep on going, well, I need to be making that 10% on all my costs and just keep tweaking that formula until you go, that's the price. And, oh, yeah, but it's, you know, it, it's 80K by what they're asking. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, just do it. Oh, but they'll think I'm a dickhead. Do you care? Right, really? It's some random suburban real estate agent your benchmark in life as to whether you're a winner <laughs> or not. So, never. You know, and, and, and I think um, to, to kind of talk, and, and it is a little uncomfortable because I, I can sort of, uh, I can relate to when, back in the day when I used to sort of, um, do, sort of when I was starting off my journey, it's a little uncomfortable because you're like, they, they get, they, this person's never going to speak to me again because then hmm. you think I'm lowballing them. And you, it's all about proper, it's all about uh, the way that you um, you frame Find it. it yeah, you say uh, Chris Chris Voss. It's, it's it's like you say. I don't know if you've heard of Never Split the Difference. If you haven't read that, or if you haven't listened, but listen yep. to that book. But he kind of says he goes when he goes to a hotel. He goes, he says this is going to be the worst day of your life. And and then the, and then the person behind the desk is like, oh crap, what's this person going to do to me? And then he says, oh well, I'm I'm just going to ask you for a discount. Like, can you give me ten percent off the room? And they're like, oh wow, that's it. And 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 it's kind of saying to the real estate agent, hey look, I'm going to give you an offer, and you're not going to like it. And they were yeah. like, okay, well, try me. What, what, what's that offer? And then yeah. the worst thing, and you kind of, and they and can't I think get it out of it. If they know what you do, to, I don't know why. I don't know what was going on. Back, back in the day, in the early days, I was really kind of secretive with agents about what, it, you know, that's how, so looking for yourself or an investor, I'm like, oh, whatever, you know. But then I kind of like, well, no, because, and it's actually served me well over time to be far more open because, yeah. as you say, then, Jeff, when you're making those, and you, they go, I go, guys, you know, this is not an emotional attachment. This is yep. purely numbers for us. You know the kind of product we produce at the end. To make this work, it's this number. And they'll go, yeah, well, you're miles off, Karen, you know. And they go, okay, cool, no worries. If that changes, <laughs> let me know. Yeah. yeah. But then over time, having been more transparent and now they understand more about what we do and what we're looking for and the kind of product they produce, then that's been fantastic over the years. And then having them coming more and more to, and bringing opportunities to us. So, again, I think if it's, it's all, it's, everything is about delivery. If you go in and, and act like a bit of an arrogant dick and, you know, make it sound like you're putting out 20 offers this afternoon, you're lowballing everyone, no one's going to, you know, be a big fan of that. But if you go, look, I've gone, I've done my numbers, I'm making a considered mm -hmm. offer, this is where it's at. And, and I guess trying to find those other sweeteners as well. I guess the good thing about having access to money partners like we do is yeah, we can often make cash unconditional offers. Yeah. 
which is usually yeah. pretty uh, pretty attractive because finance can be uh, can be a That's bit right. of a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Massive. So massive. that can be the trade off. So they'll know. Okay. So I will say to to the agents, I'm not your dream buyer in terms of paying top dollar, but I am your dream buyer because I'm always buying, and I'm generally paying cash and thirty day settlements. And shout then out, shout out to Hayden West. <laughs> always, shout out to Hayden West. Always be buying is his mantra. Yeah. Totally. yeah. Should, we, uh, should we should we tick on to our second sponsor, Joe? Because otherwise, have have, have you have you got the screen ready? I don't want to be I don't want to be doing that all over again. I think I have the screen. Oh, look at that! A fantastic sponsor, Steve Polisi. Oh, and it works oh, as well. Oh my it. lord! Look at you Joe. Know, we, we don't have to. We don't have to pay. We don't have to pay Steve one as well. <laughs> Let's talk about commercial property investing. It's one of those areas that confuses many people probably because of the risks involved, but it's also one of the few asset classes that can give you a very positive cash flow from day one. With commercial property, you get some massive net yields of six to 10%. Now that's not gross, that's net, which means it's cash in your pocket. This is what makes them so amazing. Your property can actually pay itself off within 10 years, grow in value, and without having you to chip in any cash at all. Now, with big rewards comes some big risk which is why you should de-risk your investment as much as possible. The way you do this is with expert due diligence. This is why we highly recommend hiring professionals to help you along in your investing journey. Steve Polisi of Polisi Property is one such expert. He is one of Australia's top commercial property buyers agent with his own multi-million dollar property portfolio of a mix of commercial and residential. Steve has over 1,200 property transactions under his belt. He's the guy you want in your corner, crunching the numbers, finding the best properties in the best location, along with the ways to avoid the dud properties. Steve has even been the one to write the book on commercial property investing in Australia, and it's a bestseller. He's been generous enough to give us a massive discount to our audience of 50% with the code OZPROP. Click the link below, get a copy today, and start your commercial property investing journey. That was uh, that, that was sensational. Well, done. well, Thanks, well guys. done, Joe. It's only taken you about uh, no, good, good, good one. Executed so, like a professional, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> and that's coming from you. This is coming from PR, you know, the PR consultant queen here. So, uh, so there you that go. Is, that's it. That is nice. uh, that is it. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I love uh, I love that um. I love that you, the way that you think about dealing with agents as well, because it's you're like this is a business. If I go in here and try and lowball without justification, I, I'm mm. this is a long term game. I'm building relationships with these people so they know who I am when I'm coming back. So yes, it's a no right now for this property, but when I come back next week, it's going to be the same thing. Cash on conditional. Let's go. Are you ready? Actually, Karen, I don't want to deal with finance. This I've got a you know first home buyer with a. 5% deposit grant with a guarantor loan and it looks like a nonsense, I'll yeah. take yours any day. I can and I can get around with the vendor. And we've bought many times where there's been offers higher than ours, um, not so much in this super hot market, I must say, but, you know, back in the day, um, <laughs> where certainly that we, ours offer may have been 10, 15, 20. But, again, and that's about us not overlaying our values because, you know, the, that same agent had a certain um, homeowner last week that perhaps you know, wasn't overly motivated, this different homeowner this week might be in a far different situation and be really keen for an offer like that. So, again, yeah. often we're our own worst enemies in assuming, assume, oh, well, the agent said no last week, so he was like, yeah, but it's a different property, dude. And even, yeah. you know, I've seen many times a no now on a property down the track can be a yes because, you know, yeah. they're early stages now and, you know, they think their price is worth a million bucks and it's got free yeah. trees or whatever. Um, yeah. But then, so it's a no no to your offer, but then in a month's time, I've had plenty of agents come back and go, oh, you know that offer, you know, is it still there? And, I'm, and people go, oh, so I hope you go low. And I'm like, well, no, if it stacked up at that price a month ago, it still stacks up at that today, then, yeah, sure, if they come back. Um, so I've had an agent once tell me he was offended by my offer and literally within a few weeks came calling back sort of saying, oh, is it still there? And it was, and, and you know, we did the deal. So um, I'm not going to get all huffy and... Um, arrogant and triumphant and say no sucked in I was like yeah I still wanted the deal and it's still stacked up so happy yeah. days so but, so how many deals like I wanted to kind of understand how you how many deals do you look at before you're like uh, before you actually get one like obviously it's a numbers game I imagine you're hmm. kind yeah. of which depends like back in the back in the day pre-covid crazy FOMO market um, we were probably working off 
probably one of every six and seven offers we were making, we were getting over the line. Pretty good um, strike. Yeah, so and many, it is. And I guess yeah. that's probably because, you know, we know our mar numbers, bit. we know our market, people bring us stuff that, you know, we know we can work with. So, but in this market, oh, I'd hate to think, it, it's been blowing out of the water. I mean, this one we bought at auction the other week. You know, that was the fifth auction that day, but there would have been, oh, probably good 25, 30 auctions in the weeks before that, that we got smashed every weekend yeah. um so yeah. I was, and, and having to dig deep i was really getting the craps on like i get if i'm not buying i'm i get a bit grumpy so i was really you know playing the miracle equation a bit and you know i have this great mantra where i say to people if you know deal doesn't work out my favorite word is next you know with an exclamation mark it's got to have the exclamation mark as in don't get attached to it just keep moving on find the next deal talk to the next agent send the next letter do the next visa whatever you have to do. So, um, yeah, so, even I was, I'm super optimistic and, and focused and even I was have been getting. So I get there's so much frustration at the moment. But I would say, again, guys, keep rocking up because it could be that that fifth auction of the day or the 25th auction of the month that you're kind of joining on the spot and, and you can make it work and for whatever other reason others can't. So just keep mm, rocking up. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Persistence. Um, oh, I've got so many questions and they're all just like coming out, coming out. Um, but one of the questions. One, are, pick one, one thing. No, we're we're going to have a couple. We're going to have a few. One thing. Um, okay. So, um, one of the things was, um, how many properties do you look at from a macro? Like actually areas, so asset, lo well, location selection, we've kind of worked out it's based on your demographic of where you are. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. so are there any other kind of metrics or key things that you look at to say, you know what, this this market is pretty, pretty, uh, it's it's undeveloped, it's looking good, it's like yep. what are those things that, that show a good uh, area I, and a bad area? I guess as we've evolved, so we kind of have different strategy, different areas for different strategies. Yeah, so yeah. when we started off, we were very much more in, in the southern suburbs of Adelaide, um, very much sort of more blue collar and 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 things like that. Um, good bread and butter. So we were doing those and, and doing you know pretty basic cosmetic flips. And then we sort of evolved over time. Um, we're doing bigger, chunkier structural renos now. So we're going into much more premium kind of inner inner city or beachside suburbs. Um, where you know so back in the day we were doing our know, cosmetic flips and you know buying in a in high twos and spending fifty and and you know selling it for low fours or, or thereabouts but sort of now we're buying stuff that's more you know buying at eight nine um to spend 300 on it to sell it for you know 1.4 or something like that so different strategies there so with different suburbs for the cosmetic mm. flips, structural reno and then again you know different suburbs potentially for our developing in our land splits and things like that based on which councils are more development friendly and which zones lend themselves more to that which is obviously much more of a consideration with developing than when you're doing a, a flip or a structural. And, do, um, and, and Karen, when, when you're sort of looking, when you're crunching your numbers and, and knowing your suburbs, um, a, a, a way that I sort of look at it um, when I'm looking at sort of deals and I've, I've not done anywhere near 60, but the way I look at it is I look at, okay, what is the, what is the margin? What is the difference between something that's unrenovated and it's got the, got the kind of nicotine bathrooms compared to something that looks so comparable sales? How much credence do you pay for that or do you sort of just... Yeah, I do. I mean, the disparity is a really big, important factor because there are, you know, and that's a big problem at the moment, especially in like premium suburbs. People will pay anything to get into a good suburb, so it could be a heap of crap. Yeah. Um, so yeah. the disparity. So there are suburbs that you know traditionally, you know, do kind of lend themselves more to a bigger disparity. I think that's yeah. where a lot of renovators are really struggling at the moment because the disparity is just not there. They look at you know the stuff we looked at, the one we looked at the other day, and. You know what what was paid at auction in original condition is what we fees owed is what we would have sold it for renovated oh wow yeah, yeah. so yeah. that gap in between of all our buy costs and our reno and our sell costs was, yeah. it was just and that was a really really big eye opener so um it's, it's still look it's still possible to do renos absolutely but you just have to be digging that little bit harder and then the problem too if you're using tools like rp data and stuff they're just often not keeping up because the market's so moving so quickly yeah it's it's hard to find stuff so um you know and then people are like well what do i do should i be you know the the, the end sale price on fees are in, should i be adding 10 percent on that and it's like well that's pretty risky because you know who well, knows we're going to be four or five, six months time but i still work very much off that you, you fees are on today's price not on because you know yeah. who, who knows that's so, where you can start getting into a bit of trouble 
That's right. Yeah. So um, yeah. So hopefully that that gives people a bit of an insight anyway into um, how I guess you get to that stage where you just keep on turn. And it is. It's just it's building a machine. I guess it's building a process and, and systems and and repeating mm. it. And but but you have to love it. Like I do. I've seen people. Someone recently who thought this was their thing and they they went down mm. the path and kind of you know, signed up for some expensive programs and um, kind of, you know, burnt their bridges and they just, you know, we had a chat the day and they're like, oh, doesn't float my boat, Kaz. I'm not, it's not my thing. And I'm like, oh, it might have been good if we went um, oh. <laughs> so can, can, I, can, I, can I ask a question for the for those out there that are sort of on the fence and it's all like, yeah, I think I probably love property. What are some, How do they sort of transition away or how can they do it in a way that they're not sort of so much doing the Cortez, burning the boats. So Cortez is the Spanish guy who when they're taking over the yes. uh, the, yes. the uh, South Americans, yeah. Yep. How so do they do I, that? I guess it's a transition, and I guess what I talked about was having having a plan to go, okay, well, first of all, do a few reno, do some. Like don't, don't just, you know, romanticise it and, look, you know, um, Joanna and Chick look like they're having fun, so it must be good. You know, like actually do do a few deals and and work yeah. out is that what you want to do and are you good? Do you have the finances and the resources? So set up yeah. that that plan, I guess, and keep working back and and you know, is there a way that you can maybe go to part time work for a while? So you know, a lot of people have quite flexible work arrangements in government and things. It might be like you know, some government departments that you have like a year off and you can still keep your role. So if you're in that kind of a position, well, fantastic. Um, you know, take take the year off or six months and, and do that. Or can you transition like I did? You know, as you're building up your property, can you wind down your work to to go to three days a week and then two days and, and things like that? So, um, and and making sure you've got sort of the resources around you, like you've got the the time, you've got the you know, how are you going to fund these? So, how yeah. have you got the serviceability, or are you going to be using money partners or? family and friends or so kind of really making sure you sort of really address all those issues. So all the things that you do when you set up a business, even if it's often like, say, a cafe, it's similar processes if you're running it like a business. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we're, we're at the hour. Uh, well, we're, of course, we're beyond the hour. Um, have we got a couple of... Uh, we, we definitely do. We had a couple of audience questions. Jerry, uh, one, of, one of our superstars... I'm, I'm going to start doing a post, member of the month, and is there going to be some sexy stuff happening on this property? I, I want to pump up our own tyres here at the moment because um, <laughs> so I, I haven't looked at This is the first time I've, looked, I, I've been I've been proud of my discipline. So we, we do have a couple of questions come through, and we had a couple submitted from the audience prior. But before we do, Joe, while I'm getting those up, do you want to ask one more question, Joe? Because I know you've probably got 500 questions in your spreadsheet. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> my, uh, that, that list is gone. They've got heaps in there. We've, we're going to have to bring you back on, Karen. We've got a whole mindset yeah, thing. I've got a whole renovation side of things. That yeah. you, you said, yeah, oh, you know. Yeah. Um, one of the things is around the money partner side of things. So mm. um, how, do you tr how do you transition into that? How do you get to that point where it's like, like I, someone, you know, I found someone that's given, wants to give me the money. Like, how does it? How do you? Well, like, get I guess it helps, helps to hang around other property geeks at the start. And so, you know, what you guys are doing is fantastic. You know, building a community where people are sharing, and you've got people with different strategies and people with different levels yeah. of experience. I think that's awesome. So, um, yeah. so in, in terms of that, it, it's really, I guess, you know, if you can, so a track record really goes well. You know, so um, it's obviously a lot easier to get money after you've done 60 than when you haven't done any but if you can get that yeah. you know fund that first one on your own or with a family member or or something like that that you can just get a deal that you can point to and go yeah look here we did here's the photos here's the befores here's the afters here's what we made on it but just be getting in front of other people i guess who perhaps like property um uh into it but maybe don't have the, the time or the energy or the inclination to be doing this themselves but but are keen to be part of something but, you know, just be really careful with choosing your money partners. It is a bit of a quasi-business relationship. So you need to be making sure that you're picking people that you've sort of got similar values and similar ideas and what you're going to do with the project and things like that. And we yeah. sadly, over the journey, lost some friends because they came in on a deal and one of them was a control freak and I'm a control freak. And it's like, well, it's sorry, dude, it's the cash show. And no, you're not going to be picking the tiles. And no, you're you not can't site when I'm not there and talk to the Sparky and ask why is the light switch going there. So it's about um, just because, you know, I'm saying so just because someone's got a line of credit and a pulse doesn't mean they're a good money partner. Um, you need to be <laughs> making sure that you're matching up with like-minded people, similar values. You know, you might be all about producing a really great sustainable product 
and your money partner is all about doing it cheap and cheerful and as na nasty as possible for maximum profit. Well, that's not going to be a good fit. So make, talk about yeah, make, who runs on the board and hang out with other property nerds. Make sure, yeah. make sure that you're not both uh, Michael Jordans. Make sure one's a Jordan, one's a Scotty Pippen because uh, they play. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I don't know if anybody follows uh, basketball. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly But right. that, one, of the, one of the things I'm just thinking of now is like, well, um, why don't I become a I have a hundred thousand dollar deposit sat here. I I'm Ooh. busy, I'm a professional, I haven't got time. Why don't yeah. I learn the ropes by putting some skin in the game yeah. and investing that money in someone that has a deal that is I got a deal, though. I got a deal, I got a deal, I got a deal for you. <laughs> you okay, let's, let's off well, <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna show me the pictures and tell me how it's done and what the process is. I'm going to learn how to do a deal and then yeah. I'll be more confident once I've got my, I give you a hundred thousand, you give me 150 back or 120. And it's like, oh, well, this is, this is great. A lot of people would use that as a sort of a screening process. They kind of live vicariously as a renovator, as a money partner to start with. And then they can go, yeah, I do like it or I don't, or I'm up to mm. it or, you know, yeah, well, you know what, actually, Deep. this is great. Yeah. I'm loving the arm's length, but I'm loving the return. So yeah. here, here's, look, here's, thanks to the 120, here's the 120 back and yeah. keep going, you know. So, um, yeah, lots of people just love that. Um, but, yeah, it yeah. can be a great way to get a taste and go, yeah, okay, that was great. I like being a money partner, but now I'm ready to do it for myself. Mm. And it de-risks yeah. it. All of a sudden, you've got a massive cool. risk in you going out there on your own and doing it. Um, yeah, it's a great way. I mean, I as, as, as somebody looking to invest money, I, I've been on both sides of the table. So I've been a money partner, I've been a borrowing capacity partner. It's important that you do thorough due diligence as a, uh, and I'm sure you, you, you Oh, I'm, absolutely. Yeah. You this is the back of the envelope, you know, it should be right. Yeah, he's signed here. Yeah, you need to be a legal advice. Agreement. Yep, all that sort of yep. good, good stuff. Yep, good stuff. You make sure the structures are right. You've got legal advice. You've both got separate legal advice. You're both really clear. You've kind of communicated the roles, the responsibilities. Yeah. Exit the exit strategy. strategy. What if the exit strategy doesn't work? Um, yep. Yeah, who's, who's putting in what? Who makes the calls? Yeah, it's really important. Yep. But again, you know, a good property lawyer should be able to guide you through and help you set up something there that, yeah. that covers. Well, the um, I think. I think. I think we better get to some of the audience questions. Oh, Joe's going to Joe's going to uh, blow this up. Listen, I'll be a free hour conversation. So we had Charlene M Mins um, ask a really good question, um, and and this is one that. It, I'll preface this by saying that uh, we're not uh, we're not accountants, so go and speak to your accountants. But um, what are, what are your thoughts on that, um, Karen? Yeah. How do you structure? Yeah, so we do, and most people I know that do, we run it through a company structure. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, and yes, I always say to people get get accounting advice up front. Too many people sort of start to think about the accountant after they've signed the contract. <laughs> you know, do it back in the day and, and talk to the accountant about what you're doing and particularly if you're going to transition as well. So um, just, again, I'm not an accountant or whatever. So a lot of people assume you have to pay capital gains tax with flipping. My understanding is it's a lot more about the intention and it's not so necessarily a company thing. It's if you can show from the get-go that we were always going to flip this, then it's not a capital gains tax issue. Then it's just uh, a, a, you're paying a tax on the profits as a company. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's unfortunately, there's uh, we'd, we'd love to say there's ways to uh, mitigate uh, paying tax, but um, mm, usually no. there's um, yeah, unfortunately there's there's got to be some. Yeah. The tax man's got to take their clip some way or the other. Usually, for most people, the company structures are much more effective tax rate than than yeah. your own personal tax rate. Yeah. yeah and do you run yeah. the the company structure at brand new company? So project X Y Z um, one two Bigger three. Bigger ones we do developments and things. We have a separate company for each of those. The smaller projects we kind of run through um, the company structure. Yeah. Yeah. So again, every, every, time look, every time I look at a deal, I go straight to Matt our accountant and go, "Okay, it's this. We're doing this, this, and this." What's what are the implications? How do you want us to run it? How do you want us to structure it? So that's all done um, from the get go. Not oh shivers, sorry Matt, we're settling tomorrow. Shouldn't I have bought it like that? Yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I bet half his other clients do. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, the next question we had coming on is is from Jerry. Our Jerry is a great. Uh, she she's asked a couple of questions. So we'll see. I, I haven't looked at how many questions we got, but she has asked. Can Karen expand or expand on how she never pays retail price? What, what does that? I mean, I kind of know what that means, but what, yeah, what does that mean well, in your words? It's not, it's not a case of never. I guess we, the, the goal is to never pay retail. So that means yeah. when but we they buy the property, paying retail. that's right, exactly. It's, so you know, when we're buying the property, if you know the retail price is four hundred, but well, then I don't want to be paying four hundred. I want to be paying 
you know, 350, 360. Um, and then we, you know, the things that we use on our Renault, it, it's shock, as I say, that's where we kind of probably pay too much in those first early projects we paid. You know, I went to a shop and went, oh, yeah, that one. You know, whereas now it's much more using auction sites um, and going to renovator auctions and, you know, buying in bulk and getting discount oh, wow. and things like that. So um, working out, you know, where you get your bang for your buck and, and working out where potentially you can get good stuff for your reno that doesn't have to be, you know, you're not paying full toad odds for it. You're, you're getting it um, at a much cheaper price. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and even just having the company name or, or a website domain, going in, emailing mm. Bunnings and saying, hey, I've, I'm a company, I do projects, what can you give mm. me? Just yeah. ask, just yeah, ask. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. most people can get a trade. You can get your, your power pass and, and, you know, if you're doing enough, you can start to get a, a trade thing. So I know at our biggest, used to, I used to, well, my, when the Bunnings invoice came in, I think we had one year that we spent nearly $600,000 at Bunnings one year. Um, and so that, that gets you to the point you actually have your own manager, um, you know, a trade you specialist. Spending six hundred thousand. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Seventeen, I thought, 17 I thought, I thought, that year. Yeah. yeah. That was just at Bunnings alone. That was just Bunnings. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's the stuff that I used to uh, keep me awake at night. But but yeah, certainly go and talk to them <laughs> and, pass and um, ask them what they can do for you for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great insight. So let's let's kind of if you've got any fresh questions, we've got we've got one more from Celesta, and I think we sort of did speak about this, but let, let's kind of let's let's summarise. Um, it, she's asked now you have transitioned the property full time. Do you work? Do you walk walk work eight hours a day? I, I love a good I love a good uh, sort of noodle walk. Let's um, but anyway, eight hours a day of property or has property given you the luxury of time to spend with family? I, I, actually, that's an interesting question because. I, I don't know that I would work less if I work. I probably work more because, I, yeah. What do you? What, 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 how do well, you? Go? It, it doesn't, it's, it's actually not work. It doesn't actually feel like work. I know that sounds cheesy and corny, but yeah. so it's actually the best of both. It, it's both. So there will be some days where, um, you know, we'll absolutely do an eight, ten hour day. But then, like, so for example, I don't generally like to work on Friday. So Friday is a day I go get a haircut or a massage or you know, go out and have, have a long lunch or, you know, go for a drive or whatever. But then we might work all day Saturday because we're going to 10 back-to-back -back opens or whatever. So um, I guess it gives you the luxury of choice. You know, like I can always be at my son's footy games. I can be there for, for drop-off. Um, so it, I think it gives you the flexibility to be there for the important things. But yep. if you love what you do, you never, like, it's not work. Even when I'm, you know, watching the MasterChef grand finale, I'm still going to be looking at, at realestate.com because mm. I, I get a notification at the end of every year and I'm in the top 1% of users of realestate.com in Australia every year. Yeah. That's how much oh, stuff wow. I'm, I think I think um, last year I was in the 3%, so I'll have to look at so it. So there you go. Just to yeah. get me there, damn it. Yeah. So it's, so it's the best of both. It's, and if I want to have a week off, I don't have to think, oh, how much annual leave do I have or whatever. It's just like, yeah, yeah. that work for our family. And, again, you know, just pack the laptop and off we go. And so it is one of the great things. There's lots of stresses and stuff with what we do, but um, it's certainly, you know, the income and the lifestyle, is, you know, it's really nice. It it's, makes makes life more comfortable for sure. It does. Yeah, it's that it's that choice that it gives you, isn't it? Like it's yeah. been and that's right. Money, that's what to me, money's a vehicle for. It's not the stuff that it buys you; it's the choices that it gives you. You might still go to the local caravan park for your holidays, but you've got the choice when we can travel again. You, if, but you've got the choice that you can go to Europe for four weeks. You might still pick the caravan park because you actually prefer the caravan park. But it's yeah. nice to have the choice. I'll be I'll be lucky to get our New South Wales um, this year, but let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. You can only dream. <laughs> have we got any more mate how's it have we got any I more mean, questions there's, there's, there's one more question from jerry but i, I kind of I, I don't know if i, I want to hear throw, throw some throw some comments throw some questions because we're, we're, we're going to wrap it up in about five or ten minutes because we're at we're almost getting to an hour 20 and uh I'm, and karen's sort of very generous with her time and, and people are probably itching to go and watch the second half of this i don't even know what the origin score is so it's and you probably don't <laughs> want to know what the uh, i mean would you want to know jerry, yeah, uh, Joe, 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 Joe doesn't really care because he's uh, he's not really a footy fan. But um, yeah, so don't tell I, him that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So so yeah, the um, I think Joe, did you have a question for a? But throw some questions, throw some comments, people. What what are, what are your thoughts? Well, actually, a, one of, one of my kind of curious questions. This is um, is uh, your your husband's a real estate agent. Um, mm -hmm. what benefits come like? 
there there were like thoughts of oh wow he's got access to all of this this but what are and then it's like but is that the real world like what are some of the benefits of having a real estate agent as a husband one of the things legally in south australia is i can't buy from him unless it's an option because obviously auctions always seen as to being the most transparent open on the day best price so if scott's got a listing i can't buy that from him legally so Um, then that's right. He, he acts for the vendor. So how could he possibly be doing the right thing by the vendor when his wife's trying to buy it, you know, below market yeah. value? So um, I guess I actually think I, I've often said Scott is, um, the, you know, one of the secret weapons in what we do because he, he does know our market. So he sells in the markets that we're doing stuff in. So, you know, he knows, again, all the stuff I feel like I'm repeating, but he knows the demographics. He knows what they're looking for. He knows what the buyer objections are. He knows that they like to have lots of storage and you know the second the second um bath and you know more car parking or whatever he knows all that um and obviously selling through there he's spot on with his pricing like it's as anyone yeah. who flips through, it kind of all rests on you get that end resale wrong you can be in a world of pain um and so between it somewhere else, work at it myself but he's just because he's in that market himself his pricing is is actually it's, it's i'm not always impressed how spot on he is so i that certainly has that that benefits that we're always again and he's always looking at it from a professional real estate hat rather than oh let's create the world's most beautiful house and set a set a suburb record sorry let's 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 do the block which um the block is um is an absolute um bus excuse my language but it's an absolute bastardization of a reno like poor hmm. poor poor the block i mean it's oh, it's it's ruined probably so many um Ruin so many sort of um, yeah people. Mm. Yeah, it's got yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. And it's not reality. And it, we know that the crew comes along behind them afterwards and fixes up all the, the yeah. issues. Yeah. You know, people are paying three million bucks for something that's been thrown up by a bunch of amateurs. Like really? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What, yeah. Would you be thinking? So yeah, well, but, like, yeah. It, it certainly does help. It's um um yeah, and just good. You know, sadly we hang out with other agents. You know, we drink with other agents. So. We talk property, so it certainly helps. You know, certainly people, agents do bring us stuff. Um, but it's also if we weren't buying regularly, they wouldn't keep coming back. They keep coming back because you know they know we're going to be buying pretty well. Yeah, yeah. So, so the um, I'm, I'm going to sorry jump jump in there, Joe. We've actually got we've had a couple of questions. I, I as soon as I said it, it's like I I, I spoke and the universe answered. Now now I'm just we just they're flowing like uh, like a tap. So we've got here. Um, for and this is from Cone. I can't pronounce her last name without looking at it. So, for developments, what's the average price? I mean, this is very granular. So, yeah. I, I don't, it, I don't it know. It depends I'll on be, your market, your spec. Yeah, you're I, that's how long bring that one. Yeah, I, I, th- I think for some people, they do look at it on a per square meter basis. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. do you look at your um, development? Yeah, but again, it would be if it's a different. You know, so a single story is different from a double story. How high spec are yeah. we? What suburb is it in? So yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got a range, but it would that's very much again, that's where you know your market, know the builders, talk to those builders, talk to, you know, what is the, the pricing for those areas. Yeah. 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 I think um I think we'll get one more question in. It was actually yeah, related. Um, I, can, I can hear the Pepper Jack Shiraz calling me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one final question is really it was actually related to the the real estate agent um do you want to pop it up does your husband sell your properties and does he charge you agent fees or do you use a regular um agent at a lower Ooh, percentage? interesting question this is a very good one this is uh this has been a few this is like we've had some robust conversations in our marriage over the years over this conversation um the Scott sells the majority of them, and particularly when he was more, when I was full time sort of rainmaker, he was a full time agent, and he yeah. pretty well sold most of them. We actually do do it arm's length because we've got our our Renault development business, and then we had our real estate business, and they're separate companies. So yes, the the real estate business was charging commission to to rainmaker, so it was kept very separate. Although we did do a good rate, um, but I kept saying, you know, I'm your biggest client, so how about you pull your head in? Um, so we did it that way, but now more than that, oh, he's I actually more well in Rainmaker and he's selling less. He's happier, he's quite happy to to be, you know, using agents more. And if they bring us a deal, then, yep, great, mate, here you go. Well, then you get the resale at the other end. Um, so, yeah, he's doing, you know, more of that. And, um, you know, if you're doing developments, well, then, you know, we might get a, a project marketer in anyway to do some selling 
um, yeah. uh, you know, uh, from that point of view. But so, yeah, it, it's good. It's a lot of fun. But he, um, yeah, there's been some robust comments. I have threatened a few times to get another agent if he didn't lift his game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How am I going to feed my family with this? My wife, she's got expensive tastes. Yeah, I've got private school fees and good to pay for. Come on. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So, so yeah, that's, um, but before I let Joe kind of uh, wrap it up nicely in a bow, I wanted to um, really give give some uh, fantastic sort of um, fantastic energy away. Thanks for coming on and and thanks for oh, just yeah. being. Um, so a, a very transparent and jumping on pizza and property and doing um, like sharing a lot of your journey and probably just inspiring a whole group of sort of people um, younger sort of, of younger and people maybe even older like yeah just people of all ages inspired to um, to, to get on and, and and take their journey seriously rather than uh, turning their hobby into going pro and I think there's something in you could write another book I think and yeah, and, and, so, yeah. and, and no, show, people, show people Thank how you. to go pro appreciate the opportunity and you know I've had a few people along the way that have sort of you know been the difference in my life giving us that that leg up or whatever so um, more yeah. than happy now I feel like I, you know it's my duty to pay it forward if I can share some knowledge and some experiences and that helps someone along the way then um, more than happy to give whatever time or energy I can to that for sure and by so by by Karen and Shiraz and and she might ask uh, <laughs> <share it. laughs> Shiraz and Shiraz does rhyme Jeff for a reason remember that <laughs> yes, Shiraz and Kaz. Oh, I love it. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Karen. But how, how do people kind of reach out to you? Um, what what kind yeah, of... Probably best um, by Facebook Messenger. I'm redoing all my websites and um, all my oh, socials yeah. at the moment. That's so the, yeah. um, they're getting a That's revamp. The That'll be the that'll be the hug of death, Karen. You'll um you'll probably get about twenty to twenty to thirty inboxes now. Cool. But um, yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm cool with that. And I, I get a few already, and I might not get to them straight away, but I do always <laughs> like to just give people a, a, a bit of a, a bit of feedback or a bit of support or whatever. So yeah, it's all good. I um I don't make that offer lightly. No, I love that. I appreciate it. And this is what I this is what I love about this whole session is you just kept giving and giving and giving and value and value and value. And I think that that's why you've been able to be so successful in what you're doing is because that's what you give out to the world is what you get back as well. So um, going back to that whole mindset thing. So okay, great. Well, let's wrap this thing up. Um, we always like to finish it. Um, do we do I have to finish on anything else, Jeff? I feel like you're looking at me like, hang on, but you didn't. There's a question. There's a question you have to ask, Joe. Is that the question you're about to ask? No, nah, you do it. Are you not going to ask the question about anything else we should have we should have asked? Mate, you do the thing, whatever the thing. <laughs> <is you do. laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Is there anything else? Is there anything else we should have asked you that we that we didn't in the interview? Um, no, no. I think you guys covered it really well. It was lots of fun. Um, it was great. And if there's anything that you ever want to expand on down the track, certainly happy to jump back on and do another call and and keep chat, keep uh, keep chatting. Perfect. Excellent. Awesome. Okay, let's go right. buy a property. See you later. Peace, guys. Thanks, well done. You can say.